Hello, this is Bunting, and today we make some tippery, resonant, languagey, alien squawky sounds in Vital. <laughs> Now, all the presets I've made here, plus this entire project file, are already posted up on the Patreon, which also happens to be a great place to support me if you think I'm really cool. So the first thing I'll break down here are these WAMPs. And as I open this WAMP, you'll see it demonstrates some fundamental principles of tipperology. And that is, well, ignore all this, ignore all this, ignore all the effects, okay? The fundamental is saw wave plus peaky filter. So we have our saw wave, right? What I mean by peaky filter is anything with this kind of resonant peak, right? We can get some band pass, some low pass, high resonance or in, the, in the middle. We can have four mints, right? We can have phasers and all this. And my whole formula is I'm modulating these and then stacking more and more and more through more effects. But for this, I chose this formant filter. So I have this shape here, and on the foreman, I'm modulating pretty much this spread, which gives it this really nice closing effect. I turn this transpose down so it's a little lower pitch, and you can also modulate these foreman X and Ys to further mess with the vowel shape. And I also turn this peak up. It kind of defines the movement a little more, which we want. Then onto our effects. This is where it gets insane. Not that insane, but I'm just adding more and more peaks. So right here, by default, your flanger is going to look something like this. And that's all right, but I want it frozen, so it's not wiggling on its own, and I want it mono versus stereo. And now you can mess with this center on our own. And yeah, just messing even more with this kind of peaky movement. Just find a position you like. And then we can add even more, right? I mentioned phasers are great for peaky movement. By default, it looks ugly and wiggles around. We can turn the offset down, freeze it, and mess with the center here. And with all this stuff, if the movement's a little too overpowering, right, phaser, you can kind of turn the feedback down if you want, or you can turn the mix down too. Now, I did end up wanting a bit of stereo on the sound, so I turned the phaser offset up, and I liked it. Now, for even more peaky movement, right, we have this EQ. The first thing on the EQ, well, it's not that. It's just this uh, high pass filter, which the cutoff and resonance moving is giving it some well, more peaky movement. Then to kind of contrast that, I have this notch filter here with the gain up. And that's also moving, kind of moves inverse through the peak, helps kind of define its movement a bit, right? And I have the resonance moving here, so it doesn't kind of mud up the low end, it only peaks in the mid-range. And then to kind of give it this womp shape, I turn on the high pass, which is opening this right here, which just reels everything in. So I think we have enough peaks by now, hopefully we can glue it together with some distortion, more stereo with some chorus. We can uh, add multiband, but I didn't want it so crispy, so I turned the dry wet down and, you know, the classic tack and release up. But yeah, with this alone, right, all these peaks combining, you can get so many different peaky, tippery sounds just messing with the shape. But to add a little more sauce to it, I went into this voice. Well, we cut out the low end from all these filters, so just add a sine wave, I mean basic shape sine wave directed out right so it's not being affected by all this effects we added and then because uh, a lot of tippery sounds are made in razor i was like okay how can i add that like razory additive high end and to do that i got well an additive wave table from glork glunk and i kind of mess with these um just additive morphing modes Right, it has pretty nice high end, pretty nice character on it already, but face disperse kind of gets it squishy and moving, and then the formant makes it kind of zap. We want to zap, okay? And if you want even more messing out of the sound, more messing, uh, you know, a little face disperse gets a little squishier tone out of it versus grittier, squishier, which is cool because we like to squish. And post-processing here, pretty standard, you know, EQ stuff, a bit of saturation, 
and then distortion in the mid range to give it more boof. The tiniest bit of OTT because I don't even know. And I EQ'd the heck out of it, which I don't even think I needed. And just more distortion, you know, classic. And we have this same womp back here, which with just slightly different parameters. Back here, you'll see, yeah, I just changed the type of formants. I have a different little oscillator three layer and you know, just slightly different kind of shape is how I made this. But keep all this in mind because all the sounds here are pretty much saw wave plus peaks plus more peaks and processing stuff. So we've womped our womps. Now it's time to squonk our squonks. And by squonks, it's these guys, okay? The infamous squonk has much in common with the formula I just described. So you see it, uh, saw wave plus filter plus more peaky filter movements and all that. So let's disable all of these and start in the beginning our lovely saw wave. And on this saw wave, right, you'll hear it's just a uh, pitch moving, right? On your non kind of tonal, more lead elements, you can have a, uh, you know, pitch bending. And I have this with this LFO here. You can mess with the rate. I kept it pretty slow so I can really shape it wherever I want. You can have it all sorts of stuff. Have fun with it. And I put that on level two just to make it a little more dynamic y. But the real talkiness is from that band pass. To get this band pass, it'll start off like this. We drag it to the middle, it's a band pass, and then we can get it narrower on the 24 decibel. And then find a position you like, and we can modulate that with the same LFO or a different LFO. Up to you. I did like to turn the drive up a little just to get a little more crunch and fullness out of the sound already. And then we could add the tiniest bit of stereo on it. Great. Now the peakiness continues forever, right? We have this flanger, same kind of formula, just messing with the center, phaser, emphasizing all that talkiness, right? It does kind of get rid of some of the fullness of the sound, but don't worry, the multiband crushes everything. Attack and release up, release down a little bit. And then we got another peak here, right on the EQ. You hear it going. Just kind of in between, I don't want it too like just sine wavy, but I want enough to emphasize the peaks. It's fun. And then, what do you know, another peak, another peak. I did turn the, the mix down, so it's not so overpowering. You know, it's all subtle stuff, but I think it really adds up in the end, because just listen, like, to this. As many peaks as you can fit, baby. And if you want, you could uh, beef it up with a bit of distortion, especially I did this kind of pre-filtering trick, right? It starts off like this. You can uh, turn this resonance down, the blend up, which will make it only distort the high end. So then we could kind of just have it like half distorted. It can help crisp it up. You can have a chorus if you want, but I didn't stick with that. And then icing on the cake, the OTT. Just a boof. Blah, blah, blah. But yes, so always plus peaky filters, and you'll see that all these have a similar thing going on, right? In fact, this one here, pretty sure it's the same patch. I just drew a different LFO shape, right? And then this one is very similar, but I have a secret maneuver, right? Well, for one, it's kind of plucking. Right, just quicker rather than the sustain note. But this disperser, which you can get in the Bunting 10K pack, but essentially this is just a ton of EQ3s together, which just like makes it squishy. You hear resonant language use this a lot. And they're all macroed to the frequency low, frequently high of all of them, just so you can mess, uh, mess with it. Note that I do have this on sync mode, or else it's just gonna re-trigger every time, versus just kind of going through the full wave when it repeats. And yeah, this one isn't doing anything, so ignore him. Same stuff, bro. But you can see messing with the different pitch movements combined with the filter and all those other post-processing, plus some final squishy stuff on the end, you can get a lot of different variations out of the squonks. Now, under these squonks is this flutter sub you see me show. And it starts off, well, as a normal sub, right? I chose this because it was just beefier sub. And for the flutter, we have white noise. With this really fast mode, we can uh, change it from tempo to seconds. You can get it super fast on the level right here. Modulate it. 
Just to keep it hissy, I uh, filtered this sample out. Keep it right in the high end. And then we could uh, distort it a little too to get more character from it. Effects. Yeah, I did this pre-filtered uh, sinoid fold, right? Which essentially, um, it's just crisping just the high end on its own. Half on the mix, so it doesn't fully filter the high end. But I did like the crisp it added, but it kind of just boosted the uh, noise a bunch. So I use this EQ just to tone it down a bunch, you know, you know. And then the filter with this dirty mode on the end, it just uh, gives you this drive, which is just another distortion to use. Oh, and that's quite crisp, you know, and a little pitch bend on it didn't hurt for the riff. So all together, that's the first half of the drop, which sounds like this. Now for the second half with our cromps. So this first here, right, I'll disable the post-processing. That disperse is important, keep that in mind. This right here is our classic Brick Squash G, Jade Cicada E, Resonant Language G, harmonic distortion thing. Which looks scary, but I promise it's only half as scary as you would think. In the beginning, what's going on is just boof sub plus harmonic series, right? You can just select the tone through this harmonic series. Because when we add the distortion to it, that's where it's coming. From there, I just went and stacked a bunch of different distortions, right? Just a subtle amount on this analog drive here. And then we could have a... Ignore the reverb for now. Right, the distortion. And then to emphasize just more movement. That phaser kind of moving through that low mid-range on the same LFO we have here. Uh, yeah, it's nice. And yeah, that flange is really nice. I also turn up the offset a little for that stereo. Now, this EQ, we have a notch moving through the low end, which kind of cleans up some of that mid-range mud and adds more movement to when we distort it at the end. And then classic stuff, move it with the multi-bands, you know, more stereo with the chorus. And what I did at the end here, I kind of reeled together all this movement, right? We have this pretty much on everything, shaping the big movement, and then we get the womp womp from this shape on this LFO. And you can have a little bit of distortion here as a treat too. Now to kind of add extra grit to this, I went back, I had a slight saw wave. It's going through the effects though, so it's not being filtered, it's just being affected. And then the tiniest bit of noise, it could just add to that grittiness and texture we desire. But you see how it plays out, right? We just have that strong distorted bass and then we add more and more movement any way we can through filter stuff. And then more distortion, right? But on top of all your distortion, we throw on this disperser. It takes it from sounding like digitally to just like moist and I don't even know what. It's really nice on the sound though, I know that much. And now we can crisp it with more saturator. Keep in mind, I like to turn down this bass. It uh, distorts the low end less, which is nice if you just want more of that high end fullness and crisp. Jesus Christ, it's got beef on it. I, 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 and here's the trick I did. I have this little riser into it. God damn. Um, for this, I had this reverb on 100% dry, 100% wet, I'm sorry, with high decay. <clears throat> and you're pretty much able to, uh, yeah, just play that out with resampling on right here. Record it. Ooh, and it's scary. And then you could reverse it. And then you have, yeah. Watch out for the sidechain though, because the sidechain was still on when I recorded it. That's why it's not smooth and beautiful. And make sure to freaking turn it off when you're done, right? And here's your disclaimer. I have done tutorials on this before, but I felt like I've been able to take it a lot further through just more and more peaks, bro. It's and for our next part of this, I'll cover this little opening bass, right? Already, we have that disperser giving it that squishy character, right? Big mid scoop, big distort. But actually what this is, um, I took the same patch from before, right? The same patch from the Womp. I added this kind of, I changed the shape from, instead of a Womp, I made it open over time, which was good for that kind of fill effect. And 
instead of uh more like high end movement, I just had it more saw wave beef. Feel free to copy everything if you're a real copier or type. Yeah, disperser with the saturator beef important. Mid range scoop makes it just crisp. Maybe a little less on it, but you. I hate mid range. Now these might be my favorite of the bunch. So this first lower layer, right? You can already tell disperser doing a lot for it. Res laying uses that a lot because it's a phase plant. Kill a and you see it again. Right, because the formula was so sound, si si saw, saw waves plus peaky filters, I just did the same thing with variation. And I was lazy. I didn't even like reassign the modulator. I was just like, all right, I just want it at this exact position. So I just drew it in with the step. And you see it just hitting that clear harmonic, which really gets brought out by our disperser and a ton of beat. Yeah, very fat. And you know, a little pitch bend on it did not hurt anyone. In fact, it saved millions of souls worldwide. I'm okay. The fun glitchy layers are fun and glitchy. Okay, these type of sounds are made in Razor and just additive stuff like that. But lucky for us, Vital has some options for us to make these. Right? Ignore the effects; they don't do much. They're worthless and garbage. But essentially, right, to get just random like metally glassy whatever combs filtering movements you know random amplitudes work great you can mess with all these honestly they can all do well but i like the random amps and then to add movement on top of that movements we uh format it i was liking how format sounded it just sounded like the most additive out of all of them and in order to get this type of movement what did i do I automated a bunch. It's just jumping. And it's all hitting the same note. It's just all these different modulations jumping around. You get a little zap at the end. Ooh, it comes out pretty nice. Why do I have sub on this? That's the real question. Under effects, I was really liking the flanger so much, in fact, that I didn't make it do anything. I have this tiny notch zapping through, which doesn't really do much either, but I did like to cut out the low end just so it wasn't really interfering with the rest. Distort it just to get a little slammed. And yeah, chorus is nice for stereo. Multiband is nice for beef. Bah, 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 bah. I don't know. Main thing is this spectral movement with Vital. And because I wanted a kind of plucky effect, I well shaped it into plucky with the filter. We get a little boop, 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 with a tiny spit of release, so it's like just sustains a bit. And combined with that, yeah, it's fat. And that's also because I have it soft clipping into this as well. Which, when it's so slammed and together, it kind of like distorts into its own thing. Which you can have even more of if you're free. Yeah. And all together, it sounds something like this. And all these sounds really just saw waves plus peaky filters. We did have a little sign compression in there as a bonus treat. But you see how far you can push these building blocks into making whole damn EPs out of it. So go make some tippery bangers. And once you come back from Tipper and Friends after being recognized as the headiest spunion there for knowing how to make these sounds, you can support me on Patreon as thanks. Yeah, you get this whole project file, all the presets in it right away. And alternatively, or in addition, I offer some one-on-one -on -one lessons, right? There's plenty of free and paid sample packs up on my site as well. Here they are, there's a bunch of them. And if you wanna hear more weird bass stuff you need artists to listen to, I'm in fact an artist you should be listening to. SoundCloud, Bunting, Flux, Stream Flux today. And I guess social links down here. Click this one because it takes you to the Discord where you can just hang out with like-minded dudes. It's a little chat room if you don't know what Discord is. It's fun, fun time. And like, and comment, and subscribe. And no more sellout time. I'm grateful to make this video and have you all enjoy it and learn knowledges from it. So use it wisely, make bangers, and peace the frick out.